Hey Tommy, have you ever wondered what it's like to drive one of the hottest new hatchbacks, and I mean hottest new hatchbacks, on ice? That's right. So in this video, we're going to tell you about a really unique experience we had where we went to Steamboat, Colorado to drive a bunch of different versions of the Toyota GR Corolla, the all-wheel drive turbocharged hot hatch on ice and talk to you about some interesting things we learned about the car in this experience and uh, share some of that um, track time with you. Then you're gonna get to see Tommy whipping it around the track as well. <laughs> so let's start with doing a walk around of the car so that you can learn a little bit about what it's like for Toyota to build a hot hatch. So we got something really special here. This is a GR Corolla, but not just any GR Corolla. This is one of 200 made, because this is the Marizo edition, which is the most stripped down, hardcore, limited production GR Corolla. You know, Tommy, I haven't been as excited about a car in a long time as I have for this vehicle, because it is just so awesome to have a hot hatch from Toyota when everybody else is going to electric cars, especially one that's got such a cool engine. You wanna show it to them? Yeah, for sure. And what we're gonna do once we do this walk around is we're actually gonna get this thing out on the ice and see how it drives in some slick conditions. Now this is a Marizo, which gives you 22 pound feet more torque. So this is a three cylinder engine, just a little guy, but it makes 300 horsepower. And in the Marizo, two 195 pound-feet of torque, but Dad, this is what makes this version so special. You want to take a look back here? Well, it's unobtainium, Tommy. That's what makes it so well, special. Well, yeah, that's true. We can't buy yeah, one. Yeah, you can't get one. There is no back seat. Yeah, so this is the hardcore, stripped-down track version. If you want to bring your friends, tell them, the, tell them to ride in the Camry, and then on the inside, you got stuff like the suede steering wheel. You got the suede Marizo shift knob. Check that out. And of course, you got all of the suspension changes, brake changes that make the Marizo even more hardcore than the GR Corolla Core or Circuit Edition. Now, I love it because not only is it fast and fun, and it's got the most unique exhaust out there, I think. Check it out, because of course it is a three cylinder, Tommy, so. You gotta have the three ports, Dad. You gotta have the one, two, three ports coming out to show exactly what's under the hood. Yeah. But when we first got to drive it, we were on a racetrack, but now we're gonna get to drive it on ice. Yeah, and check this out. It's rolling on a set of Bridgestone Blizzak WS90 tires. So they really went all out on this little program out here in Steamboat, Colorado. This is probably one of the only times you're gonna see a Marizo edition sliding out on ice. And we're gonna get this thing out there, have some fun with it. We'll try um, a couple different uh, exercises and see how it performs with that really cool GR4 all-wheel drive system. Now, Dad, to be honest with you, we probably should have shown any other GR Corolla because the Marizo is the one that they are no longer producing. The things we're selling or are selling at $25,000 over sticker. I mean, it's incredible that a company like Toyota, you know, which for the longest time has been known for building the Camry, has now built this incredibly hot hatch. Now let's talk about the trims for 2024. So the base model is the core, and then on top of the core, you can spec something called the performance package, which adds the front and rear Torsen limited slip differentials. Then there's the premium trim, and there's also a circuit edition. And the prices range from 37.5 up to about 46 grand before markups. So you're looking at like high 30s, but more realistically low to mid 40s for this car. And what do you think that after spending some more time on ice, is the value there? Yeah, you know, it competes with cars like the Honda Civic Type R. Yep. Um, the WRX. WRX, the SI is gone, STI is gone. Um, and so it's in a limited uh, herd of new hot hatchbacks, and I'm so happy that Toyota is actually building it. Now in Europe, they get a GR Yaris, which is a little bit smaller, and all the Europeans wish we, uh, they could get the GR Corolla. Um, the cool thing about this experience that we had was- Wait, you didn't answer my question at all. Is it worth the money? Oh, heck yeah, it's worth the money. It's worth every penny. It's worth so much more than what they're charging for, because get this, it's got 
300 horsepower out of a three-cylinder 1.6-liter turbo, and I'm sure you could crank that turbo up to more than 300 horsepower. Yeah, I mean, it's 185 horsepower per liter, which is absolutely nuts. But here's the thing about this car, Dad. You're really about buying that fantastic engine, the six-speed manual, the GR4 all-wheel drive system with the different um, power splits, which we'll show in a second. Um, but the rest of the car is very much a Corolla, eight-inch touchscreen display, you can spec it with heated seats and a heated steering wheel, but you're really buying that powertrain. And that really is the magic in this car, right? It's a very low frills, for the most part, automobile with a lot of performance. Look, you got a, you got a, you know, balls to the wall sports car uh, that you can uh, take to a track day and at the same time uh, drive to work, put two of your friends in the back, load up the hatch with, you know, your dog or your stuff. I mean, that is just, to me, the perfect vehicle for under $50,000. And in today's money, that's not a lot. I wish you were wrong on that one, Dad, but the new, the $50,000 is now like the new 35, unfortunately. But let's do this, Dad. Let's cut back to some of the footage of us at least trying to drive it around the snow track, failing a little bit, succeeding a little bit, and, um, and then we'll, we'll cut back here. All right, so we're onto the throttle into the first turn. Let's see if these Blizzard tires work. Oh, there's less grip than I thought, Dad. They're real tight, so we're getting the speed shut down, you know, appropriately for each of these is going to be key. Oh, it's a little bumpy. Right, this is set up for track work, Tommy. We're going through a chicane here. This is set up for rally work, Dad. This is a proper rally car. Wow, it's actually so fun. It's so small and nimble through this course. Through this little chicane here in the first, a little bit of wheel spin. <laughs> Get it a little sideways. Look at that, Dad! Get a lot sideways. Wow! Kick it sideways again. <laughs> Bone killer. <laughs> oh, wow. Too sideways, Dad! Oh, no! <laughs> wow! Yeah, I got it a little rowdy there. So we're in 60 40, and even with 60% front 40 rear, you can still get it completely we'll sideways. Onto the limiter, of course, hard into the first turn. Stay out there, Tommy. There you go. Wee! a little earlier so you can start taking the steering out earlier. Oh, Dad, this is so much fun. I have decided I now immediately love the GR Corolla. <laughs> Look, I've driven this car extensively yeah, on the yeah. road, and it's a great little car on the road, but I always felt like it needs a little bit more power. But you get it out here on the ice, and you just don't really think that at all. Yeah, schedule it through. Let's see if we can flick it through here. Yeah, you need to. There you go. Pull on sideways. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it in the bank, dude. We won't put it in the bank, Dad. Don't, don't put it in the bank. Okay, <laughs> oh, yeah, put it in the bank there. We didn't put it in the bank. We're fine. <laughs> oh, my heart is pounding, Tommy. This is so much fun. I don't know, uh, you know how you get one of these because they're hard to get. But I would, uh, I would, I would give my first point. Oh, that's you. Never mind. Yeah, you want to give me away? <laughs> or one of these. Here we go. Fast? Too fast, too fast. Well, you'll find out. It, it's right. a, it's a really tight turn. All right, I'm just taking it easy. Yeah, good, right. good call. All right, here we go. A little on the throttle, yeah. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Smooth, Tommy. Smooth. All right, man. Smooth is fast. Yeah, you got fast to is smooth. Here. Smooth is fast. So this all-wheel drive system doesn't use a center diff. Instead, it uses a combination of a viscous yeah, so coupling. And a torque system. Oh, too fast, Dad. Yeah, those tight corners, don't be afraid to, you know, you get brake pressure. Yeah. That noise down, you can really run a bottle of that. It's, yeah. a, <laughs> it's a combination of a viscous cou coupling activated by clutches, is the best way they could explain it to you. And a uh, Tyler. Good power, huh? Yeah, good power. Good. Okay, right, learn the track. All right, so this first corner. Yeah, so it's a slow entry, and then you can really kick the butt around, yeah, bring juice it, it a little. Bring the back around. Nice. Look at that transition. A little bit of a steady flick here. there. Yep. Very good, Dad. A little bit, you know, pointing the other direction. 
Now the cool part about that drive, Tommy, was that they actually had us drive three cars and there are three different settings in the car. So you can change the torque split between the front and the rear. And you want to tell them what those three torque splits were that we drove around the ice um, track? Yeah, there's a 60-40 split front back, a 50-50, and a 30-70. And what this exercise allowed us to do was go from one to another to another with all the safety nannies completely disabled and feel the difference. Now. From my impression, I mostly prefer, believe it or not, the 60-40 front split. And that's because, I will be completely honest, I do not have the driver skills to completely and effectively manage that quick oversteer action in such a small wheelbase. With the 60-40 front split, you are easily able to get the back end to come around and have some sliding fun, but it was much easier to regain control on that counter steer because you have a little bit more oomph going to the front wheels. In the 30-70 split car, which we drove last when it was the iciest, so much as glance at that accelerator pedal and that back end's coming around and you have to be quick to catch it, and I just don't have that skill set yet to be that quick. Oh, I don't know. You were doing some pretty... Uh... Pretty crazy uh, Scandinavian flicks. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying, Dad. You were. But whether or not it was succeeding, well, that's another question. So let's talk about where we were at. We were at the uh, Bridgestone Ice Driving School, which features Blizzax, and all of the uh, GR Corollas had Blizzax, uh, and it's amazing what those tires can do. Uh, and what we learned uh, before, actually, we got to drive them was how to drive on ice. And there were some interesting lessons that we can share with you guys. Yeah, so we had a number of different exercises that got us um, a company or a custom, excuse me, to the track conditions. So we learned about lift off oversteer in an ice environment and how that varies compared to a pavement. We talked a lot about um, uh, separation of controls, the difference of braking, accelerating, and steering, and how on a really icy environment you have to do one of the three, but you can't do multiple or you're gonna overwhelm the grip level on the tires because by the end of the day, this track was just a sheer sheet of ice. So we got a lot of great practice perfecting our ice driving abilities and it was a great experience being able to sit in a controlled environment and have that knowledge. Yeah, there were two lessons that really stood out for me. First, and this is very common for most uh, high-speed driving classes, you will go where you are looking. Sure. So if you're looking into the berm because the car is heading into the berm, you will go into the berm. Right. Or I should say, in this case, ice uh, bank. That's right. Because what happens over time, um, it thaws and freezes, and what looks like fluffy snow is not fluffy snow. And uh, what was the second thing you learned? Uh, well, uh, Bridgestone claims that you can actually get better performance on a studless new technology Blizzak than you can with traditional studded tires. Yeah, it's really interesting, and um, they, they talked a little bit about that, and we've had some experience with that in the past, but they claim that their new soft compounds on a standard icy condition have the performance of a studded tire, and I'd love to go back there and compare them side by side and see uh, how those compare. So a couple other things that worth noting, and this was, this was um, a lot of fun for me, is I've driven the GR Corolla, as you have, quite a lot on the road. And it's always been a fun, fantastic little car, but at semi-legal speeds, or especially at legal speeds, you really have a hard time getting a sense of what the all-wheel drive system is doing. Because the performance threshold for all these modern hot hatches is so high that to really get a sense of the all-wheel drive performance, you either have to be on a track or doing something really dangerous on the road. But in a snow environment, you can exercise that four-wheel or all-wheel drive system and get a real sense of its performance benefits without endangering people. And you know, this is this was the big eye opener. It's like, I love the, the Type R. And I especially love the manual transmission, which is far better than the Toyota manual transmission. It's quicker, it's got snappier throws, it's just a little nicer. Um, and on the road, I love the way the front wheel drive Type R drives in the dry. Uh, and I always felt that a dry drove a little better than the GR, especially with the steering precision of the Honda. But if we had the Honda out there in the snow with us, it would have been 
a lot less fun. And being able to experience this car in the snow just goes to showcase the three season capability of really where that car shines. Yeah, I mean, the ice driving really highlights uh, how grip changes based on weight. Um, so when you're accelerating, obviously, all the weight of the vehicle goes in the rear wheels. When you're braking, it goes on the front wheels, and that translates to grip. And I nice, it's a really stark reminder of how you can either control the vehicle using throttle or the brakes uh, based on how much grip and how much weight transfer you have. The other thing I learned, Tom, you want to know what? What? It's much easier to drift a car on ice than it is on pavement. <laughs> yeah, I think we probably could have guessed that. Um, but then a lot harder to regain control once you got that slide going. So I want to do one more uh, piece of video here, and that is I got to go um, this time in anger around the ice track with one of the professional drivers. So let's roll that video. All right, Nick, you gonna take us around the track? We'll try to. Yeah? Now you drive race cars in the summer, right, Nick? Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you drive? I drive Euro NASCAR. Okay. <laughs> Is that like a European NASCAR? It's European NASCAR, yeah. Wow, that's it's crazy. Stock, I didn't know there was a Euro NASCAR. Stock cars over in Europe, road courses, and this year we get to run an oval for the first time in a while. And the Europeans will put up with an oval, huh? We'll see. All right, let's see. Can't wait. Is this fun? The most fun I've had all day. <laughs> Now, Dad, the last thing I want to talk about with the GR Corolla is just what a monumental shift in mindset this car represents from Toyota. And we were talking to some of the marketing folks, some of the product planning folks on this trip. And if you look at what Toyota was doing in the 90s, which was focusing in on a car that's basic transportation that's going to last forever. And they were a fantastic cars, but they were also quite maybe sterile. Right, bland, beige, however you want to put it. And this this the shift that really Akio Toyota brought into the brand towards fun to drive, towards performance. Marizo was his um track name. Track name, yeah, yeah, so that people wouldn't come flooding up to him. Um and the Corolla really is a great example of this. Like one thing I learned was that the GR is not made on the same line as a standard Corolla hatch. It's not even made in the same building as a standard Corolla hatch. It goes down the line with like the Lexus LC. And in fact, that blue flame, which is a really great color that was first on the standard Corolla, didn't make it to the GR for quite some time because they had to figure out a way to bring the paint from one facility to another or figure out the logistics on how they're gonna start painting these cars in that color because it, they're, they're just, Two completely different cars from a build standpoint. You know what I learned? What'd you learn? I learned that uh, modern cars use a lot of adhesives. Yes. Uh, and that the uh, uh, GR Corolla is so much stiffer than a regular Corolla that it has six more meters of adhesive <laughs> yeah, in, right. its, in its body than a regular Corolla. Which is crazy because you put a normal Corolla and the GR side by side, they don't look all that different. And then you start looking at some of the engineering behind them and the way the body structure is built. And you're like, holy cow. This is a, like comparing a 4Runner to a Corolla 
crossed. They're just completely different cars. So really cool to see. And you know, when you said that uh, this signals a change in where Toyota is going, you're exactly right. I mean, it translates not just to their sports cars, not just to the Supra, right? Which is obvious, but look at the new Land Cruiser, look at the new, uh, even Tacoma, right? These cars have a lot more uh, fun to drive, a lot more character, just a lot more, uh, a lot more um, lead in the pencil. You got it, Dad. Well, folks, we'd love to hear what you think in the comment section below. Big thank you to Toyota for allowing us to come on this adventure. And as always, has been Tommy. And Roman saying uh, we did not put uh, any GR Corollas into any snowbanks. Well, I, I kind of did. Did I hit, you? I hit that cone pretty good. Oh, that's right. You chewed up a cone. I did chew up a cone. Yeah, I was, I was filming him and I was waiting for you to come, you know, skidding around the corner and you jumped out of the car and you went underneath the car and you were digging around under there for a while. I did have to scoop out a cone, <laughs> extricate the cone. Yeah. Cone killer, Tommy. Yeah, but folks, thank you for watching. Um, we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.